Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to introduce stroboscopic or multi-flash photography. Now, this may seem like one of the nerdiest parts of photography that you've ever explored, but it's actually a lot of fun. Okay, so what is multi-flash or stroboscopic photography? Well, it's a technique that involves multiple bursts of light from the flash, all being recorded during one long exposure in the camera. Each burst of light from the flash gives us a new exposure of our scene. So we can do some pretty fun things with moving subjects as you're going to see shortly in our experiment here. If you've ever wondered how photos like this are made, well, that's exactly what this lesson is all about. The cool thing is that it doesn't matter at all which camera system that you're using. Pretty much all flashes have the ability to do multi-flash shooting. Setting it up isn't really complicated either. You just have to figure out how to switch the flash into this multi-mode. Of course, different manufacturers have different names for it. For example, my Sony and my Olympus units refer to this mode as multi, and I believe that applies for Canon flashes as well. However, on the Nikon flash, it's referred to as repeating flash mode, which is abbreviated with an RPT. I was able to access this mode pretty easily by pressing the mode button on my flash and cycling through a few of those options. But if you're struggling to find it, just have a look in your user's booklet or do a quick search online and figure out how to get your flash into this mode. With multi-flash mode, there are three things that we need to pay attention to with regard to the settings on our flash. And those are the flash power, that is the strength of the light coming out of the flash, the number of times that the flash is going to fire, and the rate or how quickly those blinks of light will be, which is measured in hertz. If you've already been using your flash in manual mode, then setting the flash power or output is a no-brainer. But as a very quick recap, to adjust your flash power upwards and downwards, you'll be seeing fractions in the display area that represent the intensity of the light. The highest output setting on any flash is one over one, and the lowest setting is usually one over 128. The new part of this situation is going to be adjusting the number of times that the flash fires and the rate that it fires at. Neither one of those are very complicated, actually. The number of times is pretty intuitive. That's simply the number of times the flash is going off. And hertz sounds like a complicated thing, but actually that's just the speed of the blinking. So if we set the hertz to 20, that means that the speed of our flash blinking will be 20 times per second. If we set it to 10, it blinks half as fast. Okay, let's bring the camera into the equation. Let's say that we want the flash to go off 10 times over the course of a one second exposure. We simply set the number of times to 10, we set the number of hertz to 10 as well, and finally we set our camera's exposure time to one second, and voila, we're done. Is this a good time to remind you that I failed my college math class three times before finally passing? I think it is. You can do this. While we're on the topic of adjusting our flash output manually, let me just mention that there are some limitations with regard to our power setting. Obviously, we won't be able to fire off 10 full power flashes in one second. The flash just can't release that much energy in such a short period of time. So that's just a limitation that we have to live with. But it is interesting to try turning the flash level up until the flash itself prevents you from going any higher. And in my case, that happens at an eighth power. It seems that multi-flash shooting above an eighth power just isn't possible. So rather than getting tangled up in calculations, let's put this to use and start working on an actual shot. To find out your minimum shutter speed needed, simply divide the number of times you want the flash to go off by the Hertz setting, and the resulting number is how many seconds you need to open the camera for minimum in order to make your shot. So for the subject, we could throw a ping pong ball in from the side, bounce it off the table, and then it'll just head right out of our shot on the other side. And the advantage of that is that the ping pong ball is only going to be in one position at a time, and each of these exposures should be relatively equal as long as they're the same distance away from the flash. So let's give this a try and see how it works out. The tricky thing with this shot is going to be timing 
because the moment that the ball enters the photo, the camera needs to already be going off. So this one could be a little bit tricky to do on your own. You might need a helper. The other problem is if you want more impressions of the ball as it moves through your shot, you're going to need to turn up the hertz and the number of times that your flash is firing. I noticed that 10 times at 10 hertz wasn't really fast enough to get a lot of images of the ball moving through. I ended up pumping up to 30 hertz and 30 times, and that worked pretty well, but I did have to reduce my power setting quite a bit because my flash was not able to pop that many times uh, in such a short period of time. So one thing that we noticed with the ping pong ball shots as we were bouncing the ball in on the table, because the flash is in this forward position, we're actually lighting up the front edge of the table a little bit more than we'd like to. So um, what we did is just stuck a little piece of black tape in front of the lower third of the flash head, and that just basically flagged a little bit of the light and prevented it from lighting up the forward edge of that table. The, uh, the shots that we did afterwards with this in place came out pretty well. All right, so now it's your turn to go hands-on and do some of your own experiments with this multi-mode shooting. The sky is the limit, so once you've got the basic idea and your settings figured out, it's time to think creatively. What kinds of interesting subjects could you photograph with this technique? We've included a lot more tips and detail in our full-length lessons, so if you want to see more, head on over to viewfindermastery.com where we've got full-length tutorials, thoughtful feedback, and a really fun community of photographers that are waiting for you to join in. And while you're there, go ahead and download our free Top 10 Purchases Guide if you'd like some advice on must-have gear items that won't break the bank. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.